guys, welcome to the newest episode of Blu-ray Tuesday with Terrell. All right guys, welcome back. So, we don't get into it. So before we get into uh, the Blu-rays and the movies that I watched this week, I want to shout out Russell and Oksana. So they, uh, Russell does the thumbnails every week. Oksana edits these videos. And it's their birthday! So it's their birthday week. I'm actually filming this on Oksana's birthday. Shout out to her. And going on into that, um, I surprised her with Dragula Titans uh, tickets. So this past uh, Saturday, uh, we went to go see Dragula Titans live. And that was, it was so stressful leading up to that. This was a sold out show, y'all. Sold out! So I uh, was super excited to go though. And um, I got tickets through this app called Vivid Seats. I don't recommend it, so I'll just, we're gonna get into it. So, you, you guys heard about the little things with shit sells out, they have resellers and they put it like on apps and shit. Well this, I've never used these people, right? So I was reading reviews and trying to see, like, okay, a lot of people said, oh, this shit works. And, these, and then a lot of people said horror stories, like they didn't get their tickets before, like an hour before the show, or they didn't get their tickets leading up to it. And I was like, okay, what do I do? I really wanna go, I wanna surprise her with these seats, right? And these tickets. So, um, I ended up getting the tickets and uh, I was, okay, cool. So you have to sit and you have to wait. You have to wait for them to, the reseller to send them. So they, they claim it's a buyer guarantee or some shit. So I was stressing out. So all through Thursday, all through Friday, I ain't got my tickets. So I keep refreshing my Gmail and I don't ever check my email like that. But every time my email popped up, I got excited. I'm like, okay, cool. My tickets are here. No. So uh, I, I messaged them and a little, little self chat thing because when you call, it's just like, you know, people, they don't speak English. So I called and uh, I mean, I texted. So they actually speak English with that. They got translator. So when they did that, they were like, oh, well, it's a delay. It was supposed to be arrived by the end of Friday. It did not. They said, oh, we'll reach out at eight in the morning when we open. I'm like, okay, six in the morning. I messaged them again. And still, they said, oh, reach out at 12. I'm like, okay, 12. Still ain't got my tickets. I reached out again. Still ain't got them. They said, oh, we'll just call two hours before your event. Two hours? Ah, I already told this bitch her birthday we're going to go see Dragula. And I haven't got the tickets yet. And y'all took my money. So I happened to call. So I was like, okay, I mean, I'm going to have to, like, listen and try to, like, you know, learn a new language. So I called them. So when I do that, the, the girl was just super happy. She answered the phone, like, I, I don't know what kind of happy juice this bitch was on, but she was extremely excited to talk to me. And uh, I think she put that on that facade because she knows she probably gets lots of complaints. Because I read more reviews. This is a hell of horror stories on Vivid Seats. So these Vivid Seats, you, you might not get a seat. So I called her and I was, she was, I was explaining the situation. I was super, I put on my Caucasian voice, my customer service voice. And she was just like, oh yeah, I'm happy to check in for that. In her little uh, Asian accent or Indonesian. I don't know what the fuck the bitch was. But she put me on hold for at least 20 minutes. But I guess they reached out to the seller. And that's what they all kept saying. But she reached out and she said they were gonna send it within 10 minutes. I waited. She's like, should I wait on the phone? And I should have told the bitch yes to make sure I got my seats, but I got off the phone with her and they finally arrived. So I should have called from the get go, but I didn't. But uh, I got, finally got the tickets and we went and it was great. I got this shirt and it was a little tight on me, but I got this shirt and I was really excited and um, we had fun. We ran into this cool drag queen. He was super nice named Tess and he's married to this gorgeous woman. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool, drag queen. This straight drag queen it was so cool and then we ran into a uh, shout out to insta phillips on instagram michael phillips he does a uh, cool drag events uh, oasis here in san francisco he did the buffy the vampire slayer live he did the scream live and now he's working on pride in gotham which i'm super excited to go it's an immersive experience you get, there's gonna be all these little set pieces as part of gotham during june so that's gonna be opening up here in san francisco so shout out to him and then uh also we ran into uh, a few other people but it was super fun we had great seats Oh, I forgot the big thing. I was all thrown off because we're supposed to be at the Warfield and the day of the event, I got an email saying the shit moved to the Regency. I'm like, wait, is this a scam? So it all worked out though. We got to see the drag queens, the Dragula, shout out to Coco and Abora. They're on here, they're so amazing. Boulay Brothers, it was a great show. Happy birthday to Oxy, we had a good time. We got lit, we were drunk, we met new friends. Uh, it was fun. So, Dragula Titans, you can watch the new season on Shudder. So um, yeah, take a look, watch that, and let me know what y'all think. But speaking of shows, I wanna get into a show that I just, uh, Mika, shout out to you girl, but you told me I should watch Dead Ringers. So uh, I think, what's his name? David Cronenberg, he did a movie called Dead Ringers. I ain't never seen it. But this, I, I, Rachel Wise, I love everything she do, so I, I was excited, so I wanted to watch this. So it's about these twin girls, uh, Elliot and Beverly. So they're very different. Elliot is, uh, oh fuck, I'm gonna mess this up. They switch so much I get confused. So they be switching places. One with the hair down is the, is the promiscuous one. And the one with the hair up is the, like the introverted, like shy, the one that likes to lick pussy. So, 
So there's two of them. And the other one is like the ride dick. She was fucking a guy in the bathroom. She was fucking this person. She was riding. This guy was fucking her while this other Asian guy's dick was hard. I was like, oh my God, this is a show. The first three minutes of the show, she's eating lunch with her twin sister. And there's this fucking gross ass man talking about, oh, do you guys sleep together? Well, what the fuck what kind of question is this at a diner? We're trying to eat our burgers. And he's talking about, oh, y'all don't want to have a threesome with me? And that girl, this, uh, or lick her pussy. And she don't want to lick her pussy for you. That's her sister, you nasty freak. Anyway, so this this show is amazing. So basically it's about these two girls who uh, one of them is focused on this new way of bringing life into the world and women and pregnancy and all this shit. And the other one, she's more like she wants to do it the traditional way, da 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 Whatever. I only watched two episodes, so I don't know where this goes, but I heard it goes crazy. That first episode is crazy. Very graphic. Lots of sex. Lots of babies being ripped out of vaginas. There's some sad shit that happens. I don't want to spoil this too much, but y'all need to watch it. Uh, it's on um, believe Amazon Prime. Uh, but y'all need to watch this. Uh, Dead Ringers. It's with the twins. They be switching places so much. That first episode will really, really you guys in. And I think you should watch it. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to spoil this too much. But uh, watch it. Dead Ringers. The show's crazy. Moving on. So, also this past weekend, I checked out Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So, I was, oh man. I love Marvel movies. I've watched all the movies. The shows I fell off on a little bit. I didn't finish She-Hulk and uh, Miss Marvel. But I'll get to back to those. But... Guardians of the Galaxy, for me, I feel like is one of the best Marvel or trilogies. I don't know. That's, that's a big thing to say. That's a great trilogy for me. That move, that, 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 from every character, where they've gone. I don't know. This movie, I loved everything about it. Every character had time to shine. That villain, I wanted to jump through the fucking seat, my, my seat. to the, Well, I was solid in 40X, but I was jumping up and down all through that fucking movie. But I wanted to jump into that theater because uh, uh, through that scream because that, that villain was awful. He was a great villain, though. The actor was great with his little fucked up face. But yeah, it was, it was very emotional. Um, oh, man, I love this movie so much. Lots of action. Uh, I don't know. And I like, I like how it ended. They kind of tied everything up. Um, it had like a... I don't know, a lot, a lot of shit happened in this movie, a lot of action, and I recommend seeing it in 4DX. It was very effective for me, but every movie I think I've seen in 4DX was effective. That shit, the way it moves and jolts and gets stabbed in the back and shit. I don't know, lots of action. I was just so immersed in this film. I don't know why I liked it this much. Like the first movie, I remember going into the Guardians 1, I didn't know who the Guardians of the Galaxy were too much, and I was blown away because I was like, wow, this movie's great. Part two, even better than the first one. And then the third one, man, I love this movie. I cannot, Five out of five. Like, right after that, I went right on Letterbox and put five out of five. I didn't care what anybody said. This movie was so good. And I see why a couple people on Instagram saw it three or four times already. Very Scream Sixes. But yeah, check this out. Guardians of the Galaxy, great villain. Um, cool story. It, it kind of caps off the end because, you know, Gamora, uh, Zoe Zaldana said that she's not coming back for any more Guardians. Uh, uh, David Batista wants to do more, um, more um, per uh, personal roles, more like. Kind of like the knock on the cabin. He wants to do more roles like that. He doesn't want to do the little ditzy, like, fucking, um, I'm a buff guy. You know, he's over it. And I get it. He wants to be known as a more traditional, uh, serious actor, which is great. I'm all here for it. So, uh, so a lot of the characters are going to be moving on to other things. So it's kind of cool that they capped off these characters and they did it in the right way, in my opinion. I loved it. No spoilers here, uh, but watch it. The movie's so good. Highly recommend it. Five out of five. All right, guys. So another movie I want to talk about that we we watched over the weekend was Hunt Her, Kill Her. So this movie, okay, I knew nothing about this. I just saw the poster. Has a chick with this guy with this fucked up weird ass mask. You know, it's not mm, doesn't reinvent the wheel. And the movie don't do that shit either. And it has this blade, right? And I was like, okay, this looks interesting. I'm here for a slasher. And um, you know, this girl's obviously gonna get hunted and killed, possibly. But uh, no spoilers here, but this movie's about a girl. She's uh, making ends meet. She has this, this daughter, and she's working at a janitor, as a janitor in this big warehouse. I don't know what the fuck this warehouse is. It's like weird that this bitch, I don't know. It's a weird ass warehouse, but I guess it's for furniture or something. And apparently she's had, I don't know, it alludes to a lot of shit at the beginning. It starts off with this guy who's like trying to like tell her, oh, we do this, dump the trash here, mop here. He's giving her the tour, right? The guy was kind of funny though. She should have been back in this movie. He was like a blink in the movie. But anyway, so, uh, and then she's gonna be left overnight, very last shift. So I feel like watching this, I got last shifts, Malum vibes, but basically she's, the premise of the movie is she's in the air, she's supposed to be working, making money for her daughter, and she's cleaning this warehouse, but there's these people trying to kill her ass. It's like five guys in this same mask and this outfit, and they're just hunting her down, but why? So uh, at the beginning, it sets up a lot of shit. I guess she had an abusive boyfriend or baby daddy or some shit. She ran into some dude, these honky-tonk dudes that were like, 
smoking. They're not supposed to smoke. The guy made it clear that you don't smoke in this warehouse. But they were smoking in the warehouse, but they got away with it because there was the co different color lighter than mine. And uh, yeah, so, and, and you had this uh, this girl. She was very nice. She was like, uh, I'm just trying to, you know, this. And I like this girl because she was very, like, realistic-like. Like, she had, like, a realistic body. She wasn't, like, this natural final girl that had to be, like, hot. Like, you know, it wasn't kill her goats, you know them flapjacks and I liked it this girl was very smart so as these guys were like coming after her she had to like stop them one by one in a sense I'm not gonna spoil it but this was, this was great these guys called her all kinds of bitches I mean that's my favorite word we very too short here I thought too short was in the movie what's my favorite word yes bitch so yeah so they were doing a lot of that they call her a trashy ass bitch stanky ass bitch whore ass bitch I was like wow why I counted if you took a shot every time these little killers said bitch you'd be laid out somewhere you'd be dead but they use that word more than I ever heard before in my life so this movie's pretty solid it's very predictable once you get that set up in the beginning you know what where you're, you're in for but I liked the little the, the where she went with it like like the, the girl like she she I guess she got kind of lucky in some of the situations she got kind of lucky but the, she got sliced up fucked up she was slicing up very home alone too setting traps and shit it was great I had fun watching this I liked it I don't know if I'll go back and rewatch this over and over and over but I had a good time watching it hunt her kill her check that out should be on VOD I think Amazon Prime check that out it was pretty solid so yeah, let me know what y'all think in the comments if y'all liked it. But it's called Hunt Her, Kill Her. And they changed the name. It was supposed to be called uh, Night Shift. But they changed the name to this. Maybe not to confuse you with Last Shift or Malum. I don't know. But it's very like those movies in Home Alone if you put them together. But yeah, great movie. Check it out. All right, guys. Next up, I want to talk about a movie called Pillow Party Massacre. So again, we're on the slasher hype. So Pillow Party Massacre, I was kind of scared because I was like, okay, Pool Party Massacre, I know a lot of y'all probably watch and probably like that shit, but that shit was boring to me. That was not even a massacre. They just sat around a pool and talked and threw shade, and it wasn't even good shade, and there wasn't even a massacre. Anyways, this is very reminiscent of that. So it opens up with this guy at a dance with this girl, right? And he was just trying to get her away. I guess it was prom, possibly, and he wanted to go fuck her, right? And she was like, oh, no, I'm a good girl. I'm not going to do that. And um, he was really, he was good. He got some game. And then she went back with her little girlfriend talking about, oh, Trevor wants to hook up with me. I don't think that's his name, but that's his name for me. And um, she was like, the other girl's like, oh, just take a shot. And there's all these like five other girls and they're all like trying to take shots at the dance or whatever. And um, two of the girls like, oh no, we're too nice. We don't do the goody goodies. And they didn't take the shot, but the other girls did. I don't know. Anyways, the girl got some courage and said, okay, girl, let's go, let's go fuck. So I went to the bathrooms, right? She gets butt ass naked and he don't, which is weird. Like, girl, how am I getting naked and you not? Anyway, she's about to fuck. He said, oh, wait, let me go get a condom. So he leaves the bathroom stall. All right, this is the opening of the movie. And then he comes back. She opens the door because she thought he was back. She heard noises. And then it's the whole prom in the bathroom. The whole prom is in there laughing at her butt ass, naked ass. So it's, and then went April Fool's. So it's an April Fool's horror movie. So I was gagged, gooped in the gumption of it all. And it wasn't even that, okay, so, it, you know, I don't want to buy seeing all my itty bitties and all that shit, my little, my, my, my tits and shit. But yeah, I get it. So she was humiliated. So she ran off, she was so upset, and she grabbed, I don't know where the bitch got a gun, but she ends up killing the boyfriend. She shoots him right in the head. And then it goes two years later, um, I'm not going to spoil any more, but that's how it opens. It's April Fool's. So two years later, it's the same girl uh, and her a friend, the, the other girl that's a goody goody that don't want to drink. She's an alcoholic now. I mean, two years past, this bitch is like, uh-uh. So they all going to go to this little cab, this girl's house. I don't know if it's a cabin, but it's a house that her mom has. Uh, she's obviously rich. And um, they're all going to stay at the house for the weekend. And they're going to have, you know, drinks. They're going to have, you know, they end up having a pillow fight. I was wondering when that was going to come. It's called Pillow Party Massacre. We didn't get that to an hour and 20 minutes into the movie. And then we finally got the pillow fight. And they were, you know, in the little, little, you know, it, it skimpy outfits. You know, very few y'all y'all guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. But it was that. And then the kill. Okay, let's get into the killer. I'm not going to spoil it anymore. So it's basically April Fool's revenge film, which I love. It's a throwback to the 80s, which I love. And, um... Oh, God. The killer was awful. That mask, he has a half mask. It has a skull that goes like this. And I guess it was supposed to be revealed, so slight spoilers here. Because every time there's a kill, it's like you don't see who the killer is. You just see, like, some of the outfit. He's in an oversized ghost face outfit. Whoever is in this outfit, I'm not going to spoil the killer because there's a reveal. <laughs> Very, uh, <laughs> I guessed it from the beginning. Anyway, so, predictable. So, they're in an oversized 
ghost face. It looks very ghost face-ish in this little white thing across the face. And then the, it's very like ghost face, but it's not. And I don't know, some of the kills, they had a magic wand for a knife because there was a decapitation, a guy's hand gets cut off, but when the, the killer slices it like it's butter. I have never seen a knife go through a guy's hand like butter and it falls right off or, 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 or a head. I was confused. So he was a supernatural, he had a supernatural blade in my opinion, I don't know. But the movie's all right, I mean, two stars for me. I don't know, it wasn't that great. Not no good chase scenes. Uh, off, oh, this CGI blood splattering everywhere, that was cringe. I don't know. Maybe you'll like it better than me, but it's called Pillow Party Massacre. Check that out on VOD as well. But um, I don't recommend, I mean, it's not for me. But I mean, y'all watch it, see what y'all think. So guys, so now it is time. I finally, I didn't, I didn't watch Tubi last week, but we back. So I watched a Tubi movie. So it's a Tubi original. Oh, before we get in there, it is Terrell's Tubi time. So yeah, so we're getting to a Tubi original. So the Tubi original is called A Murder at the Murder Mystery Party. Ain't that a title? That is a weird ass title. That is mm, a murder at the murder mystery party. At the house? Okay, this is stupid. Obviously, they must have changed this. I don't know how they thought that this was a good name, but who knows? But all right, so this this is about a girl uh, named Clara, Clara, or Clara? I don't know. Anyway, so this bitch, she's an actress. She's a struggling actress. She just opens up with her going to a go see or something, trying to become the next big thing. She goes, she does the lines and the girl's like, oh, well, you know, that was okay, we'll give you a call. So she don't get these jobs. And she was great, she's gorgeous too, by the way, very beautiful woman. And um, she's having trouble getting jobs, she's in LA or whatever, and she runs into an old friend. And she's like, oh, hey, Beth, or whatever the fuck her name was. And she's like, I don't know who that is, but she changed her name so she wants to be known. She's very, like, a mean girl type of, like, you know. She was awful. Anyway, so she runs into her, and then then she takes her to her little trailer, and she says, oh, I don't go by that name, and they kiki, and it's like, okay, uh, she wanted to be known as something different, right? So she uh, tries to get Clara a job with her boss. So she goes, and she goes to have like a little audition with him, and he wants her to take her clothes off. He was like, oh, if you get into that outfit for me, like in front of me, and like, you know, show me your tits, you'll get the role. And she's like, oh, I don't feel comfortable with that. So she ends up walking out because, you know, she's higher. She's better than now. She can't do that. And that's fucked up. He's, he was gross, too. I wouldn't have done it either. Anyway, so she leaves, and um, she overhears him tell the other girl, her friend, about this mystery party. So basically, there's this party where these elite actors, very Illuminati, like Illuminati, they go to this party, and they do, like, a murder mystery. They all get these cards of who they're going to be. They get a card saying if they're the killer or if they're this or that. And um, basically, there's these game makers, very Hunger Games, who watch. And they, they stream this to rich, rich, rich people who want to see people die. So they all go to this party. So she's like, you know, I want to get into this elite thing. So maybe I can talk to these people and get a, a role. So she sneaks in. And she becomes Miss the Miss Pink Lady or some shit. So she's the pink lady. Her friend is the green lady. And um, the, the shit hits the fan when the green lady dies because one of the people poisoned her. And it was a fake death, and her acting was awful. And then, come to find out, it ends up being something real. I don't want to spoil this too much. I will fucking go into this. But basically, the girl ends up dying for real. And the whole movie, they have to figure out who killed her, how she died. And Miss Clara is super smart. She's very final girlish. She goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the game makers. This is the whole thing. So basically, they go through different tests. They throw shit at them. They have to go through. It's a very, like, escape room-ish. Very much like that, uh, murder mystery parties, you get the like clue, it was like that, Hunger Games, you put those all together in one, and that's what this movie was. Again, it's, it's a lifetime version of that, like we don't see a lot of like, you know, kills, there's a lot of like sexual things, but nothing ever, no threesomes, nothing like that. I was waiting, but it, it, it was okay. I actually thought it was kind of cool for a Tubi movie, and I was intrigued by the storyline, and um, about this Illuminati type party. So, I mean, I thought it was okay. I mean, I would, I would never watch this shit again. Uh, I'll give this like three and a half, three, three stars. They don't, they don't need an extra half. The girl is cute, but not that cute. But yeah, so check it out. It's called Murder at the Murder Mystery Party. I'm not gonna spoil it. There's some twists and turns in this movie. Uh, people start dying. It, that's, it, it was good. I liked it. Murder at the Murder Mystery Party. Check it out. So, that's it for the movies I watched. We're gonna get into some Blu-rays, finally, right? So, first up is, I picked up last week that arrived late, is Baby Ruby. So 
So Baby Ruby, if y'all, a couple episodes back I reviewed this. This is about a woman who was a social media influencer. She was popping until she had a kid. When she had a kid, she felt like she was combating her demon kid. But was it a demon? I don't know. I reviewed this before, but this bitch was just yelling at her kid. She couldn't control her kid. The kid kept crying. But basically, she feels like this kid ruined her social media life. But uh, Baby Ruby, crazy movie. I actually like this a lot. But um, I wish I had a slipcover. Magnet put this out. Um, there's no bonus features, but this was like 12 bucks when this did drop. I think Best Buy had it if your Best Buy has Blu-rays. But yeah, Baby Ruby. Check this one out. I loved it. All right. Next up is a movie that dropped last week as well called Supercell. Extreme blind buy for me. I, I like Twister movies like Twister with Helen Hunt. Great movie. Classic. But I only got this. What brought me in was Skeet Ulrich. Look at Skeet Ulrich. He's Skeet Ulrich is in it. It also st stars Anne Heche. You know, the crazy bitch from um, You're Killing Me that I talked about last couple episodes ago. And also has um, Alec Baldwin. You know, he in it. Y'all, if y'all like him. And um, Daniel Deemer. I don't know. I have no idea who the fuck that is. But I don't know what this movie's about. Lionsgate and Saban Films put this out. And it's just about a tornado, I guess. I only got it for Billy from Scream. And um, this was $14.99 at Target. And you could save some extra coins if you have Target Circle. It gets 15% off. So, yeah. There's a lot of bonus features on this, but they're trying to sell it with this nice slip cover. I bet you it's not good, but I blind bought this, so you have it. All right, now we're gonna get into something, y'all, because today a movie came out that I just did not like. It's probably my worst movie of the whole year. And a couple of y'all are being shady on the Instagram, so I just gotta call that out. So, y'all were saying a lot of shit on the internet about this movie because I trashed it, and I did, the movie's awful. But we're gonna get into it. So the movie that came out this week that uh, y'all all love to hate on about me buying is Children of the Corn. So this movie, okay, bitch, I did not like this movie. You got Miss Mophead, you got some dumbass kids. We talked about it. And I got this because I love franchises. Stay tuned, because I'm doing a franchise horror show, side show. Um, stay tuned for the Final Destination one, it's coming soon. And you know, I'm gonna start ranking uh, franchises and maybe trashing franchises, who knows? So, Children of the Corn, I'm a completist. I have most of the films on Blu-ray and I wanted to complete the collection. So a lot of y'all on Instagram when I posted that, oh, what was coming out, like, oh, how many copies of that you're gonna buy? Or, oh, you guys, hey, you hated that movie, why'd you buy it? Like, shut the fuck up, bitch, it's my money, $9.99. So I bought it and had a slip cover. And I hated, uh, last year, the more, worst movie that I hated last year was fucking uh, Firestarter remake and I ended up buying that too when it was on sale. But yeah, I'm a complete, completist, I'm a Blu-ray collector, I love it, so that's why I purchased it. But I don't think I own, own, own an explanation to people. But I just feel like I had to say that because y'all were coming for me. But anyways, Children of the Corn. I'm really excited about this. That uh, uh, I'll probably never watch this again. This will probably not get opened ever. But I like that it has a slip cover. They're trying to sell this to you. They're trying to wrap up shit with, uh, with something cute, with a bow. How you gonna wrap up shit with a bow? All right, so this girl, this is a little girl with the fucked up acting. The girl, I don't even think she even has this in the fucking movie. And um, it's actually, oh, there's actually bonus features. There's actually delete, there's deleted scenes. I don't think I need to see any of that. Like, you should delete the whole movie. You need to self-delete the movie. Just saw your reference. All right, so nothing really dies in the corn. And I, uh, I feel like this should have died in the corn. I don't think this ever should have been put out. Again, this is supposed to be out in 2020, and it got shelved until 2023, and they should have left it on the shelf because it wasn't, mm, this should not have came out. This movie is horrendous. Like, I don't understand. I wish I had Miss Mop hair. See, they didn't even put her hair on here, her, her real face. They just, because she's wet right here because she was throwing water. I don't know. This movie's not good. RLJE put this out. It was $9.99 at the time. I think it jumped to $12.99 now, but when I pre ordered it, it was $9.99. But um, I don't know. I'm glad to have it in the collection, though, because, I mean, I have a whole section of bad movies, and I, and I own it. I don't give a fuck. But yeah, Children of the Corn. Not a good movie, but check it out if y'all want to. Don't get mad at me if y'all don't like it. I seen a lot of y'all purchase this. Bob's Blu-rays. I saw you got it. I can't wait to see your thoughts. But uh, yeah, Children of the Corn. All right, moving on. All right, guys, so we're getting into some good movies. So next up, we're going to talk about Unwelcome. So, Unwelcome, I, I talked about this too. This movie is pretty solid. It's about these fucking uh, gnomes or whatever the fuck they are, goblins. 
with this family. They're pregnant. A lot of babies. Remember, we talked about a lot of babies. And, and um, she just pregnant. They moved to this little Irish home because his auntie died of some shit. And he inherited it. And they, 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 um, out of unwelcome territory because they got fucking goblins that live here. And they want, they have this queen. And then, you know, this movie's crazy. So, I'm not going to spoil this one too much. I might have already had in the last episode. But this has some cool bonus features. It has behind the scenes, making of, trailers, and deleted scenes. And Amazon fucked up because they sent it with a fucking dent in the slipcover. Can y'all see that? I hate it. But anyways, Unwelcome. This is pretty solid. I highly recommend checking this one out. Wellgo USA put this out. And um, this is only, um, this is on Amazon. I think right now, when I got this, I think it was more. I don't know if I got mine. But anyways, this is like, I think it's $15 on Amazon. But anyways, yeah, check it out. Wellgo USA. All right. I like this one. It was pretty crazy. I like little critters, you know, like little uh, killing people. And people like don't know what to do. They get so scared. They think they're big and buff, but they're not. Little goblins coming to fuck you up. It was great. Oh, there's some good gore, some good slicing and dicing. Um, cool story. The actress, the main actress was pretty good. Um, it's just kind of sad how the guy got beat up in front of her, so he felt emasculated at the beginning. That's why they moved to this place in the beginning, because they lived up in the, in the hood or something. So he just, you know, he couldn't handle it. Little white man with his black girl. He couldn't handle it. Anyway, so check it out on Welcome. All right. Next up is a movie that, all right, so M. Night Shyamalan. The biggest movie that released today is, is Knock at the Cabin. So my first initial watching this movie, I thought it was okay. But... I mean, it is what it is. I like this slipcover. It's very glossy, very nice. Best Buy put out a Best Buy exclusive steelbook for this edition, which I kind of like the cover of that, and I forgot the shit was being released, and I didn't even pre-order it in time. But I went with the 4K release. And I don't know, Dave Bautista, we just talked about Guardians of the Galaxy. He wanted to be known as a, as a more serious actor. And I feel like he was great in this. I feel like he was my favorite character in this whole movie. Um, the, the, the two guys who, who had to, like, save the world, in a sense, like, they were cool as a couple, but it was so odd at the end. Um, I don't want to spoil this too much, but, like, oh, I did. I spoiled this before. Why did he kiss him at the end when he died? That's fucked up. You know, you, he, he, he told him to kill him. I feel like they didn't have that, like, connection. It was so weird to me. I don't know. It was weird. And then, I don't know. The ending threw me off. I felt like if they made it that it wasn't real and they planned that, I don't know if I would have liked that more. I was thinking about this a lot after I seen it. Basically, these people, these four people, they're like the horsemen, I guess is what they they say. And they come to this couple and their little daughter, and they, they say they have one of them has to sacrifice themselves to save the world, or there's an apocalypse gonna come to like blow them all out and everyone's gonna die and it's gonna be hell. And no one believed it, but then they knew, like clockwork, when shit was going to happen, when shit hit the fan, and these guys start dying one by one if they don't sacrifice by a certain time, right? So, as the movie goes on, it gets to the last one, and you're like, okay, is this going to be real? Is it not? Shyamalan's known for twists, but I guess in this case, this is made from a book. So, um, it's called The House at the End of the World or some shit like that. I don't know. Don't quote me on that, but I know it's a book. It's not called Knock at the Cabin. They changed that for movie purposes. And um, maybe that's the way that ended. I don't know. But, I mean, I, I liked it for what it was. But I just think I, I expected something different. Maybe going in knowing that it was Shyamalan. I don't know. But uh, I like this edition. This is a very nice slipcover. Um, it, it has a lot of bonus features. It has choosing wisely, behind the scenes, deleted scenes, extended cuts, all kinds of shit. So, um, yeah. So if y'all want to pick this up or get the Best Buy exclusive steelbook, it's also in 4K. Check that out. All right. Well, that's it for this week's Blu-ray Tuesday. Shout out to Russell Noxon on their birthday week. Listen to the Overlook Hour. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. And it was very, it was a dollar store, a dollar store mask. I should have said that in the video. Oh, well, who cares?